Today we play a teamer aggro deck, sort of. Let's see. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your week, having a happy Monday as it were. Guys, we're going to be jumping into a teamer aggro deck and I say teamer very lightly because you'll notice it's mostly just red green good stuff uh, with a negate. <laughs> uh, which is interesting to me. I found this deck on MTG Arena Zone. It really caught my eye because it was labeled Teamer Aggro, and I brought it into Arena, and I was like, you know what? It's kind of Teamer, uh, and so that was kind of enough for me to be like, yeah, sure, let's try it. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit of an oddball deck, but it's one that I, I really do think could be very fun. I have not tested it yet. We're going to try it together first time, um, but features a lot of the powerhouse cards in in standard right now so uh as top end threats obviously ren and seven and goldspan dragon two of the best in the five drop slot in my opinion uh goldspan dragon potentially one of the best five drop creatures in standard right now bested potentially by some of the legendary spirit dragons but the fact that this has haste and gives you mana is like ridiculous to me um ren and seven obviously one of the more powerful planeswalkers i think there's some other black ones in particular that really set you know kind of set a pretty high standard uh but ren and seven certainly does a number on the board i mean you're able to drop a giant tree folk if you'd like throw out some extra lands if you need whatever whatever you need ren and seven's kind of got you on that end uh, Asika's Chariot, just a powerful card in general, able to, to copy a lot of tokens. Um, and so that's really helpful for our deck because we do have a lot of tokens. Prosperous Innkeeper, giving us some treasure tokens. Magda doing the same. Uh, and then of course, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, giving us that 2-2, all of which can really do quite a bit for us. And then of course we can use the Reflection of Kiki Jiki if we, if we so choose. Uh, we do have Reckless Storm Seeker. This is gonna give us haste on a lot of our stuff, get us in for some attacks really quickly. Uh, moving back to the Prosperous Innkeeper, this gains us some life, which is going to keep us out of range of a lot of opposing aggro decks, which is really useful. Uh, Magda, like I said, does give us treasure tokens, but if we sack five of those treasure tokens, we can just go get a Goldspan Dragon <laughs> uh, and get in for some attacks and keep going. So uh, a really powerful card, in my opinion, uh, for this deck. This is usually a pretty quick answer uh, for, for most decks. Uh, Dragon's Fire really capitalizes on the Goldspan Dragon, but it's also just three damage on its own. We don't have a ton of dragons in this deck, uh, and so between this as well as the Shatter Skull Smashing, we're hoping to kind of remove some threats. And speaking of, if uh, our opponent has a big Planeswalker or, you know, something that is sweeping the board or whatever, we've got Negate up here uh, that can just take care of it. It can just completely wipe that from the board uh, or from the stack, and we're good to go. Uh, ideally, I would like to play around with the configuration of this list. I haven't edited this list at all, by the way. <clears throat> uh, but I would like to play around with this list that does bring in things like Test of Talents as well. Uh, because if you think about it, if you can just one-shot all the Doom Scars in a deck, or one-shot, uh, I don't know, a removal spell, uh, like an Infernal Grasp, and get all of them out, all of a sudden your opponent's left with very few answers to the deck that we have. And that certainly seems appealing to me. The benefit of Negate, obviously, is though that it, it does hit Planeswalker, it, it hits Meat Hook Massacre, it hits a lot more stuff. Uh, and so that's certainly worth it. And then, of course, the Sentinel sitting in the one-drop slot. That's going to give us some some mana as we need it as well. Uh, in the, the land slot, not too much uh, of a surprise. We do have the Crucible as well as Besiju. Uh, Den of the Bugbear and Lair of the Hydra are man lands of choice. Our blue mana coming from that River Glide pathway uh, as well as the Bark Channel pathway here. So nothing too crazy, but it should be a fun time. I'm really intrigued by this deck, guys. So we're going to jump into game one right now, see how it goes. We're going to learn together. So let's see how this one ends up going. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We've got three mana. We've got a Prosperous Innkeeper, and we can ramp into a turn four Goldspan Dragon if we so choose. So this seems great. Uh, we do need, I guess, one more land at some point here, but like we're in pretty good shape. I do think we progress our own game plan before we worry about the Dragon's Fire as well. Uh, not terribly worried about that, so let's uh, let's make this happen. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and Prosperous Innkeeper now. Uh, crucially, what this allows is that guaranteed turn, uh, if we can get a land, guaranteed turn five Goldspan Dragon, whereas the Magda, not quite so guaranteed. This does have to tap to create that treasure token, and so uh, it does need to survive a turn. 
uh, which is not always as easy as it sounds. And so we're we're hoping for the best here. Wedding announcement, certainly a great card. Um, Shatter Skull Smashing. Well, that does kind of help us out here. Um, I think though we'll go here first. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to go Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, this gains us a life, of course, but it also gives us a nice little 2-2 that when it attacks, creates its own treasure token. That just means we may not have to shock ourselves for three or lightning bolt ourselves for three, excuse me. Uh, but we'll see. Ah, tasty. Um, I love coffee, guys. It just really helps me out. This is the third video I've recorded in like three or an hour and a half, and it's super early in the morning. <laughs> Uh, all right, what do we need to discard here, if anything? Weirdly, I think it's Magda. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this, I think. Um, it's going to gain us the life. Let's attack with these two. If they want to kill uh, and double block here, that's totally fine. In fact, we can actually just Dragon's Fire one of them, um, if we so choose. Okay, no, they decide not to. That's fine. All right, so what are we worried about? 100% it's got to be like a... A, um... Oh, what you... Doomscar. I don't know why that was so difficult for me to think about. They definitely will have Doomscar in their deck, I imagine. Um, sure. Annoying, but... <sighs> not the end of the world. Maybe they don't have a land, though. That's a possibility. If they don't have a land, they are not in great shape. That's for sure. Uh, so they're going to exile it. I mean, there's not much we can do about that. Um, and they're going to sack that to kill the Prosperous Innkeeper? No, they're just going to create a treasure token. Gonna go ahead and kill this little one one uh what this does is open up attacks for us next turn it's not a an amazing play by any means but it certainly helps us out a little and uh i'm certainly okay to do that so all right this is gonna come down uh we can play the reckless storm seeker so let's do that uh do we want to dragons fire this Kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, I think I do want to get that off the, fe the field here. Um, so then this is going to... We'll give this haste. It doesn't really matter. And then we just get the treasure token back. That seems pretty good. So next turn, we've also got Den of the Bugbear coming down. Um, this is certainly a, an annoyance for us, but the Shatter Skull Smashing, we have enough mana. We can actually just deal with that if we need to. Mm -mm. This also like decentivizes them from doom scarring if they have it, um, just because they're not gonna want to lose a four or five with you know vigilance and all the good stuff. Oh, they just have this for free. Well, that's super good. Okay, that's highly annoying. Um, <laughs> so what can we do here? Um. I mean, I do kind of think we just have to, we just have to go for this, right? It kind of sucks to have to do this, but, and we have to spend all of our treasure. But I don't think we can let that thing stick because it's going to start creating more one ones, which externally leads to more damage for us. And so while we do have to spend a turn to answer that, I think it's just the best play. Hopefully they don't have too much. That's something. That's pretty good. Um, they're going to be really confused by the blue. <laughs> uh, so I think we just have to throw out the, the fable. Um, and hope for the best. I don't know what we could draw. I mean, Goldspan Dragon wouldn't be bad. Chances are they've got a removal spell for it. But uh, I mean, uh, you know, at some point we just have to go for it. Wow. Okay. Well, that makes it worse. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking we're going to die. <laughs> it 
sure. Wow, we are just drawing all the lands. Uh, definitely going to pitch that and draw another one. Cool. So, I mean, this isn't very good. Um, truthfully, they can just kill this, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, I know. You can kill it. It's fine. Block it. Do it. Do the thing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this... That was useless, essentially. Uh, but we got another creature on the field. It's the takeaway, and that's kind of what I was shooting for. Cool. Yeah, we're super dead here. I don't think there's a draw in our deck that can get past all of this. They just have so much on the field right now. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's not going to do it. I know we have 20 life, but like this is kind of just a massacre. Um, I mean, yeah, it has trample, which is pretty cool. At least just block it with the one. <laughs> no, okay. I was gonna say, um, whoops, ah, do the thing. All right. Yeah. We just kill those two first. All right. This is about to flip, uh, which is going to give everything. <laughs> I think we just good game them here, guys. We're pretty much dead here. Um, they're going to draw a card, lose a life. They've got all the tools in the world here. Wow. Okay, yeah. I'm going to concede. That was a mess. <laughs> that was really bad. Let's jump into a next game. All right, guys. Here we are for our second game. I think this is the second game. Um... This is a bad hand, right? I'm gonna mulligan. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Um, weirdly, I think it's this that we throw back. Um, yeah, so this allows us double prosperous innkeeper into goldspan dragon, which is certainly useful. Um, let's do this and let's do this. I'm trying to make sure we play correctly. Um, so we play land next turn, and then we just play Fable, I imagine. Or we could play Double Prosperous Innkeeper, which is not bad. Um, I'll be honest, the trick to this deck is that it dies really easily to a lot of stuff, and that's kind of difficult. Um, oh, we could do that. Just to get the tapped land down. Um, nah, we're gonna do the... We'll do this. I kind of like the Double Prosperous Innkeeper. It's a little bit like tricksy and obviously just trying to be greedy, but I'm kind of into it. A uh, little worried that they just have a saw it coming. This is definitely a deck that could use it. So looks like that's not going to be the case this turn, though. So that's helpful. It could also be that this is the like mill deck. And this might be the uh, dual strike, whatever it's called. Um, which is certainly a good card and definitely one I don't really want to have to play against, but that's cool. Um, we do have a bunch of like, not a bunch, but we've got some high mana value spells. And so the reality is we may not mill quite as much as some of the other decks that this, if this is the mill deck uh, that we may have to worry about. So land drop, gold span. Not much else to do here. Gain a couple life and attack for quite a bit. Get to leave up the dragon's fire. I do expect they've got a, f uh, whatever you call it, the bounce, fading hope. That's the one. Uh, however, we do get a treasure token in that, and the if they they use it on the goldspan dragon, and the fact is the goldspan dragon has haste anyway, so that's like a, not a great card against the goldspan dragon. Um, they kind of just need to burn it out. Uh, which they could very well do, but instead they're going to crush the weak. Um, yeah. Do they have another one? Probably. Crush the weak is a very good card. Um, not much we can do about that. We just let it happen. Okay. My turn. Hmm. So we can just activate this if we'd like. Uh, alternatively, we can Fable. I think I like that better. Uh, 
Um, I think I do play this as the land side. It's a little bit tricky. I could go either way with it. Um, but yeah, I think we do that. That gives us a little bit of extra mana. I'm just going to return it. Uh, sure. I'm kind of glad we didn't do this then. Because, again, Fading Hope is a card we expected. But, like, that's definitely annoying. Uh, again, I'm not Lair of the Hydra-ing. Is that how you say it? I think that's how you say it. Uh, for a multitude of reasons, but... Okay. Yeah, I'll Dragon's Fire one of these. Just before it deals a ton of damage. Um, yeah, you got me. One thing I hate about Lair of the Hydra is that when you have treasure tokens on the field, it's constantly being like, hey, do you want to... <laughs> Do you want to do the thing? Um, I'm actually going to submit zero. Um, so we do this for... Cancel. We, no, what, whatever. All right, we're going to do this for three. Uh, and we're going to attack in. So I'm leaving up the negate because I do anticipate something else like another burn down the house or just a really powerful spell that I'm not really interested in dealing with. That's uh, not good. Okay. Cool. Well, now we're pretty dead. No. We might, we might be able to sneak something out here. We'll see. We're not dead yet. We're pretty close. Um, They can deal, what, six this turn? They get some treasure in response, which is very good. Um, there's a bug there, huh? All right, we'll see how this goes. I am curious. So they're going to deal another six this turn. Crucially, this is a three turn clock that they have us on right now, not a two turn clock, which is actually very important. Um, we do have a Hall of the Storm Giants, but they're not. Well, actually, yeah, they are pretty close to activating it. Well, that sucks. This creates two. So two, three, four, five, six. So they can activate it. Ugh, so this is not a three turn clock. <laughs> Uh, 100% negating that. Really glad they went for that and not just the Hall of the Storm Giants. That seems silly. I don't know why they wouldn't have just gone for the Hall. I guess to spread it out. Do they have a negate of their own? Yeah. <laughs> hey, fair enough. You got me. Uh, that's really good. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm not blocking doesn't really matter. It equates to the same amount of damage or a killed Kiki Jiki. Uh, let's see. Can we kill them this turn? Probably not, right? Three, four, five, six. We can get them to six. And then we have one mana left over, which is not enough for that. Uh, let's see. Two. One, two, three, four. That's also six. They equate to the same amount of damage. We can do this for four, five, six. Man. Uh... So we can shock ourselves and do it. Can we not? Pay three life. Three, four, five. Hopefully we don't just die to a two mana spell here. Yes, we figured out the line. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> wow, I can't believe we figured it out. That was hilarious. It took me a minute. Sorry, guys. Let's jump into one final game, guys. We got a little bit of time. All right, guys, here we are for our last game. And yeah, I mean, we keep this. It's uh, a little sketchy, to be honest. The Magda is most likely going to die, uh, to, to be honest. <laughs> um, but it is nice to have this because it can ramp us, of course. Um, that's an interesting card as well. Uh, I am going to go for the Magda first. 
We'll see what the Dragon's Fire can hit later on. I'm not super worried about the Usher. Um, quite yet. A Luminar cast turn would be kind of bad. Do we take the kill? Hmm. I think I'm going to say no blocks. If they want to spend their turn creating a 1 1, that's kind of fine. Uh, nice. Let's do this. Let's do this. Why did I do that? That was really stupid. Whatever. It's fine. I am attacking in. I know they can block. I don't care. That was really dumb. That was a terrible, terrible attack. I should have attacked with the Storm Seeker. That was so stupid. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. So crucially, we can still kill this with the Dragon's Fire, which is 100% the plan, I believe. Um, we could, I guess, Goldspan Dragon and then Dragon's Fire. Yeah, that seems better. So let's do that. Send it here. Actually, cancel. We don't have to do that yet. So what we can do is see if they invest any more mana into this uh, before we actually have to do anything. So I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. Um, I will do it now. So we're kind of forcing them into doing something about this, I think. Okay. Sure. So in light of that, they're going to do this, in which case I'm going to go ahead and... and... This gives us the mana we need to sacrifice the clue. Which we'll go ahead and do now, because there's no reason not to. And basically we just get to draw a little further into the deck. Okay. The gate's actually pretty good. Um... So I guess we could have attacked in for more here if we had played the chariot first. Um, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and play it now. All right. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Uh, could have done a little bit more damage there, but that's okay. I'm not leaving up negate here uh, for a couple reasons. The biggest threat they could have is a creature at this point. Um, and they didn't play one last turn. So, but they're probably going to be looking for one because they need to get something to turn on this Maul of the Skyclaves. And so, yeah, they could play another equipment. They could play something there. Doomscar, good, not game ending. We've got the layer of the Hydra plus the Den of the Bugbear. So again, I'm not, I'm not terribly upset by that. Uh, certainly not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Um, get to attack in. Going for the 1-1 one -one here because we can copy the tokens. So, like, why not? Um, and again, they're not, it doesn't look like at least a very good instant speed deck. And so these man lands are going to be tricky for them to deal with. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, but again, not, not game ending good. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So we can make this a five, five. So I think we just attack with this. Um, that Maul of the Skyclaves is going to be quite good for them. It's not a card I'm really looking forward to dealing with, but we at least get the Thalia off the field here. And we're just kind of draining their resources as best we can. The reality is, like, they're not going to have a great attack either way. Okay. We need to draw some action. Like, that's our problem. If we draw, like, a Goldspan Dragon, we're golden. Um, but... We are, so far, not really doing that, so it's kind of unfortunate. Um, I think we have to do this for six. We're basically forcing them to block every single turn. <laughs> um... 
So I'm curious to see what they do. The Skyclave Apparition is not a good one for them to block with. Oh, okay. So they are going to get to kill this. Um, but we do trade two cards for their one, and now they're just down to Maul the Skyclaves and Skyclave Apparition. Um, which is good, don't get me wrong, but they still can't like reasonably attack with it. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I mean, we're in kind of a precarious position here. I think we just leave up negate. This seems bad. I don't know. I have no clue. This is a weird place to be. I'll be honest. Elite Spellbinder, huh? Okay. That's annoying. Um, yeah, so they're going to get a negate. This is tricky. We've drawn really badly at this stage in the game. We just need a threat, and we are not drawing threats at all. Uh, and so that's super unfortunate, but it's just the reality of it. Um, yeah. Are they going to attack in? Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. That's interesting. I don't know that I would have done that. Um, that's fine. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so we can activate this. I think we do kind of need to get on the aggressive side here. What could they have is the question. So we are going to get a treasure token out of this, theoretically. Uh, if things actually work. Uh, and so... This does not have lifelink, which is really important. Um, they have to trade here with the land. That makes sense. Again, we do have negate up. Just gonna fateful absence that. So now they're down to two, and they've got a single 4-4. Four, four. We're mathing so hard right now. <laughs> I don't math good. Um, okay. Yeah, technically that survives. The, that keeps them in it for a turn. Um, <laughs> any haster would be just so nice right now. Um definitely think we go this route we're basically just saying like hey if you get a doom scar go for it and yes i am attacking in but oh they just took it huh they had outs there like a hundred percent they had outs there but we did it that was awesome guys let's talk about this deck all right, so Teamer Aggro uh, actually did get a couple wins. I'm kind of surprised. Um, the reason being, again, as we as we kind of discovered there, uh, any kind of sweeper deck is pretty good against a deck like this where you're just flooding the board with a bunch of like little stuff for the most part. Like our biggest creature is certainly the naturally big creature is certainly Goldspan Dragon, um, but it's pretty easy to meat hook massacre through that as well as just doom scarring and you do get around obviously the uh the treasure token you know you're not targeting it so it's a little easy to get around that but you know regardless we didn't do too bad i'm actually pretty excited about this i enjoyed this deck quite a bit uh i um i think it's kind of funny that it's only got the teamer in it for the negate um but it did actually work to our benefit i think having that negate was certainly useful in a number of different scenarios and so yeah i'm I'm pretty happy with it, guys. I really enjoyed this deck. Um, do I think it's great in the meta? No, I don't think it's amazing. Uh, I think it's pretty okay. Uh, but there's, even if you think about like Ren and Seven, you drop that Ren and Seven, how often do you see like Fading Hopes uh, dealing with the, the token creatures? I mean, it's pretty common. Um, yeah, it's a big scary threat, but it doesn't have trample. It doesn't just finish the game necessarily. Uh, now it certainly can, <laughs> um, but it doesn't mean it's going to just finish the game. And so for me, I think it's okay. I don't know. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment down below. <clears throat> Excuse me. Woo. This is my third recording like back to back, so I'm losing my voice a little bit. But guys, thank you so much. I love you all very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. I'm doing my best to record everything ahead of time. Uh, but I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys then.